A fresh mock draft is up on CBSSports.com. And our Ryan Wilson with perhaps a knee-jerk reaction to the combine because he has J.J. McCarthy in the top three. The Michigan quarterback had been gaining top 10 steam the week leading up to Indy, but R-Dub taking it one step further. Fresh off his trip from Indianapolis, Ryan Wilson joining <laughs> us here, Brady Quinn on set. So this is how it's going to work as it does. Ryan, our draft analyst, going to explain himself, and then Brady will react to that. We have to start with J.J. McCarthy. Was the interview that good, Ryan? Because uh, you bumped him up a little higher here, and now he's in the top three. Uh, you guys know better than I do, Tommy and Brady, that our buddy Pete Prisco accuses me of falling in love every time I go to the combine and talk to these kids. And uh, if not for Rick Spielman, J.J. McCarthy and I might be an item right now because he's pretty high on J.J. as well. And look, Brady, you and I talked about this last week prior to the combine. There are plenty of questions about J.J.'s tape because he wasn't asked to do a lot. But I went back and watched before the combine his third down throws with six to ten yards to go. He completed 73% 70, of those throws, five touchdowns, no interceptions, and he was making second and third level throws, which is what you want to see the next level under pressure he was even better in terms of those numbers on third down or six or more and then we talked to him and you get the sense uh, that he is a true leader incredibly charismatic quite comfortable talking to two old people about the draft on when he's on the set with me and Rick and the other thing I talked to a team that had him on the board and they said he was the best quarterback of any team of any quarterback they talked to and that also means something playing that pro style offense now look does he go third overall I don't think so but I think top 10 is a realistic possibility and I had him going two picks ahead of Drake May because Drake May has his questions as well. I think Drake May is going to be fine in terms of his NFL future, but J.J. McCarthy feels like the flavor of the month, Brady, and maybe has to come to, to being a little uh, starry-eyed when I got a chance to talk to him. No, I think, you're, I think you're touching on a lot of the things that we're seeing from J.J. McCarthy that you know maybe people on the outside don't quite understand. You know, he's coached by Jim Harbaugh, so you know he's going to be prepared for the NFL level. He's asked to operate within an NFL system. You touched on the leadership component. I remember being in Happy Valley, and a lot of the conversation around that game was whether or not Jim Harbaugh would actually be out there on the field if he was going to be suspended. So you end up getting Sharon Moore, who ended up coaching them at that point in time. We tend to sometimes forget, like, as much as that was Sharon Moore showcasing himself and his leadership skills, what about J.J. McCarthy, your quarterback, too, dealing with all of that? And then when it came down to it in the fourth quarter, they were struggling offensively to protect him versus Chop Robinson, one of the better edge rushers in this year's draft class. And what did they do in the fourth quarter, really the second half? They said, hey, J.J., we don't feel like we can protect you. That's not our best way here. But we feel like we can run the football versus Penn State. He was the first person to sit there and say, like, whatever we got to do to win. And he was a Heisman candidate at that point in time. And they kind of took the ball out of his hand. But they were able to win. They were able to move forward because of that schematic mismatch they felt like they had. So it kind of speaks to, too, a lot of the things that J.J. McCarthy wasn't asked to do quite as much. But as Ryan said, go watch the tape. Every single time he was, he delivered. He plays an NFL system. And he's the utmost leader within that locker room that have been through a lot of adversity and drama throughout the course of the season. Okay, so under this exercise, J.J. McCarthy goes third to New England. Now, in this mock draft, Ryan's also got a few trades, and it's all within the same round, by the way. Again, you can check that on CBSSports.com. You mentioned Drake May. He slides, but not very far to five, although it's the Minnesota Vikings striking a deal with the Chargers to land the North Carolina quarterback. Right, the Chargers trade down, still get an offensive tackle. They can start it right, tackle right away. But I have the Vikings trading up, and the assumption, obviously, is that one of those other teams uh, finds their way into Kirk Cousins, whether it's the Falcons or the Broncos. Drake May, top five quarterback. We haven't had quarterbacks go with the first, the first four of the first five picks, maybe ever. I'd have to double check, but it's been a minute, as the kids like to say, Tommy. So Drake May goes to Minnesota. You have your franchise quarterback there in a post-Kirk Cousins world. You have to figure out how to pay Justin Jefferson. You can do that, of course. You have Jordan. Madison, you'll have T.J. Hawkinson coming back off the ACL injury, and that, that, that division are, is going to be incredibly competitive. Now, I talked about this before, and Brady, I think I talked about it with you. Justin Herbert's last year at Oregon, there were questions about the way in which he played, and some of that is offense-related. Drake May didn't have a great 2023, especially compared to 2022. Doesn't take away from his arm strength, his athleticism in space, the size, all those things that you want in your quarterback. So I think there's an opportunity for them there to be questions about who Drake May really is as a quarterback, but I think if he goes top five, he's still a top five guy who's a franchise QB going forward. You just have to put him, and we say this all the time, put him in the right system, and what better system than with Kevin O'Connell? Yeah, look, I think this scenario is very possible if indeed the New England 
England Patriots do pass on Drake May at three, and you see Drake May start to slide. And I think the Minnesota Vikings would be probably looking at themselves saying, well, we would have to think about going up and taking our future quarterback, even with Kirk Cousins uh, not able to be franchise tag, but trying to work out a, you know, a, maybe one or two-year deal with him to come back. I mean, what better case would it be to have Drake May learn from a guy like Kirk Cousins, who's one of the best in the league, and is getting up there in age. So it could make a lot of sense uh, in that scenario, from that standpoint, or just sit there and say, hey, look, we're going to go ahead and play the guy. We're going to play the rookie and start over. We'll let Kirk Cousins go off into free agency and go try to go find that big money deal that he's looking for. Let's try to restart, revamp this thing. I do have to ask the question to Ryan, though. I mean, Ryan, if only you spent the entirety of the combine <laughs> with a guy who used to be the general manager for the Minnesota Vikings, and I'm sure at some point in time, you know, you and Rick Spielman had the opportunity to speak to some of the folks there with the Minnesota Vikings. So I just find it kind of interesting that you would come up with this scenario uh, coming back from the combine now and playing out the Minnesota Vikings being interested in Drake May and wanting to trade up to potentially take him in this scenario. It's just, I feel like I'm connecting a lot of dots here. Am, am, I, am I onto something? So I, I floated, a, uh, I had one of my little birdies talk to me, and I floated the idea that involved the Minnesota Vikings and the quarterback not named Kirk Cousins. I floated it to Rick, and uh, he just stares straight ahead because he has the greatest poker face when it comes to sharing information, nothing else. He's, he's uh, as, as Pete calls him, a, a rube about, about a lot of other things, but he was not eager to engage my, my uh, rumor mongering. So let's just, we'll leave it at that, Brady. We'll circle back. All right, we'll circle back. But I do think Brady is on to something, by the way, just for the record. Uh, during this mock draft, you have Buffalo going up to the teens in a trade with Seattle. So at 16, R-Dub, where are they going? Man, I love me some Brian Thomas Jr. And I loved him even before he ran in the four threes of the combine at over 200 pounds. Uh, Bills fans have been lamenting a wide receiver in the draft uh, for months now, going back to the regular season, Tommy and Brady. I would be fine with them staying put and getting the best available corner back or even a wide receiver at the bottom of the first round. But I got to give the Bills fans what they want. I don't think this is too high for Brian Thomas Jr. And he may even go higher than 16. He is a special talent. He's a touchdown catch machine in terms of running. I don't think anyone ran ran more inside fades for touchdowns last season than Brian Thomas Jr. Uh, he has the ability to run other routes, just wasn't asked to do it a lot. If you can get Steph Diggs back to his form that we saw two years ago, uh, Khalil Shakir has played well uh, last season, especially after being a day three pick for the Bills a few years ago. I love what Brian Thomas Jr. was able to do with Jaden Daniels. And if you're upgrading your quarterback situation, going from Jaden to, to Josh Allen, that feels like it can make some sense for Buffalo Bills. This makes a lot of sense for, for a number of reasons. The for first starting being give uh, Josh out another option to go along with Stefan Diggs and I think Brian Thomas is just really hitting on the cusp of what he's potentially able to do in the NFL level he's a bigger big play receiver you saw the speed at the combine if you watch the tape you saw it too that's one of the great things when your quarterback wins the highs and he's viewed as one of the top picks in the draft is everyone gets to turn on the tape and see you on the opposite end catching those passes so Brian Thomas has been a ton of fun to watch as everyone's kind of preparing watching these quarterbacks play as well I'd say this though too there's always something out there about Stefan Diggs and whether or not he's going to stay in Buffalo or be in Buffalo. He's under contract for the long term there. You can go find some odds out there where maybe there's some other teams that would potentially be interested. And if that's the case, you may have to think about starting over with the number one wide receiver. I think Brian Thomas has the ability to be that number one wide receiver at the next level. It needs a little bit of seizing, a little, little conditioning to get there, but uh, it would make a lot of sense too, depending on the Bills' long term plans mm -hmm. for Stephon Diggs there. And that's a fit that they need because of Gabe Davis, of course, no longer in Orchard Park. And then lastly here, uh, speaking of the day, topical news with Mike Evans, R-Dub. I think it was wishful thinking if Chiefs fans thought that he'd be there. But it was a nice thing to think about. But they still need to address the position here. So under this mock draft, you do have them addressing that position with a young fella. Yeah, and Brady, I, I, I'll give my spiel here, and then I'll ask you a question that I think is an important question if you're the Chiefs. I'm taking Xavier Worthy. He ran a 4-2-1, but he played that fast. The issue is he weighs 165. Uh, he plays tougher than 165, and by that I mean he can take hits, but he can also uh, pass out some punishment, which is interesting to see given his size. Now, he had some focus drops. I think once he gets those out of his system, he can be a game changer, and we saw that uh, during his career at the University of Texas. I like the idea of him going there and let Rasheed Rice do his thing, who's a 
a bigger wide receiver, and then having someone like Xavier Worthy pairing with Patrick Mahomes and, of course, Travis Kelsey. Sky Moore hasn't worked out yet. Maybe he does. Um, you see the numbers there. The 4 one is just it's hard to wrap your brain around even when you watch him play. But, Brady, if you're the Chiefs there at the bottom of the first round, would you rather have Xavier Worthy, his teammate at Donai Mitchell, who looks a little bit like Brian Thomas Jr., the way he plays and the speed at which he runs, or maybe even Tyler Guyton, an offensive tackle to help that O-line? Because I think you could go in any of those directions and not be losers, but I wouldn't think Xavier Worthy here. Yeah, the biggest question I think you're asking is how do you go about helping Patrick Mahomes for next season? And I think you'd have to go with one of two things. To me, either you're looking at protecting him or you're going with someone that you feel like has an extraordinary talent and skill. And Xavier Worthy has that. He's the fastest player in this year's draft. You see it on tape. Ryan, you touched on the smaller size, but that doesn't necessarily, uh, I guess, kept the Kansas City Chiefs away from drafting smaller receivers like we've seen in Sky Moore, like we've seen in Miko Hardman, who was drafted left, now came back once again, uh, who also ran a pretty fast 40 time. Uh, this has to be one of those draft picks or mock drafts where NFL teams are saying, Ryan, don't do it. Don't do it. We already had to deal with Patrick Mahomes and Tyreek Hill. <laughs> if Xavier Worthy becomes anything close to Tyreek Hill now with Travis Kelsey and Rasheed Rice based on what he did last year, we don't want to have to see an offense that looks like that. So I would love to see probably Xavier Worthy because the way he's been able to move around and just with the top end speed, what he could do. But I also think you couldn't go wrong with A.D. Mitchell there in this spot based on his 40 time, a little bigger, uh, more physical type of wide receiver. But you've already got that in Rice. So maybe you go the other option with a guy like Worthy you could do more with. GMs might not want Ryan to do that, but you know who does? His editor, giving them clicks, baby. JJ3, Xavier Worthy, go to the Chiefs. Uh, with the first pick, come for the information with Rick Spielman. Stay for the dad jokes and the props, like the unicorn that Rick Spielman had at the Combine in Indy. Uh, coming up this week, by the way, Charles Davis is going to be joining Ryan and Rick on the pod.